on this computer. Okay, we are recording. Okay, Lux Fiat continued. I want to take a few minutes and just review where we were last week with Lux Fiat. I'm going to do a screen share. Uh, Hi, Susan Mary. Hi, how are you? I'm so well. How are you doing, my dear? Wonderful. Oh, good. So curious, did you put the Zoom app on your phone? Yes. There you go. That That is the answer then, Joseph and um, Michael. Did you have the Zoom app on your phone last week when you tried to get in? Um, uh, yes. Uh, I think I've had the Zoom app for a little while, but I think the first time I tried it, I just wasn't sure how to get the proper number to hook in with you. But now I know. Okay. So that might be the answer we're looking for. Okay. Uh, I'm sharing the screen right now. Lux Fiat, we were talking about light, the science of light. And I was showing two examples of the profound impact of working with the light and being totally filled and infused with the light. And this image is a photograph that was taken around 1985. Mother was giving dictation by Archangel Michael and mother was so filled with light that she became transparent. And if you look around the level of her hips and her upper legs there, you'll see the marble altar. You can see it right through mother. She had become totally transparent. And if you look at the level of mother's shoulders where the picture frame is, you can actually see the picture frame right through her. Mother has become completely transparent. And this was way before imaging software like Photoshop existed. This is authentic original photograph. And it's a profound example of the light. Now, when I uh, go into the four pillars and we talk about the science of the light. There is a visualization exercise in book four, Intermediate Studies of the Aura, and especially in the older books, the color plates are much more visually stunning. This image is called the Coil of Light Visualization Exercise, and the instruction from Dwal Cool is to begin practicing this exercise. And this Coil of Light begins directly in front of oneself at the 12 o'clock position, if you were standing on the dial of a clock. And the coil has 33 spirals in it, and it's clockwise. And one of the comments in the notes about this image is that when you do this visualization exercise, know that many ascended beings are doing it with you. It's very, very important. You are engaging your consciousness with the consciousness of the Son of Masters. And when you begin to visualize this coil of light, you actually begin to create the coil of light. And the photograph beside that light spiral of Alice Bosco was taken in front of a church. Uh, if I recall, it was in Minneapolis. And you see there are three people standing here, but there's a fourth person, and that's Alice, and she's standing in the middle of this coil of light. And you can see the individual spirals, and this is the 33 coils of light. Mm -hmm. And you can see that Alice Bosco has been working with the light and producing this actual coil of light. This was six years prior to her ascension. And when we talk about the requirement to build the deathless solar body, as the vehicle that we will have for our ascension. I'm going to suggest that this coil of light is something similar to the skeleton or the structural framework of that deathless solar body. And so 
that's where we left off last week. Susan Mary, I know you were really excited when you saw that. Mm -hmm. I sure was. It, it really strengthens the credibility of the various exercises when the masters say it is important to visualize the light. And we get that in the three-step meditation. We get that in Kathumi's notes on the color rays. Uh, the exercises for the creation of the cloud involve intense visualization of the light. And the students at Shambhala Temple who have been practicing with this have come to discover that there are very noticeable effects. And often we don't feel those effects when we're doing the exercises, but we need to persist. And over time, the effects will find a way to demonstrate their effectiveness and we'll actually see the results visually. Um, and, and quite apparent that the light is there and it's very, very powerful. Then in today's class, lesson two details, I'll share this with you. The four pillars revelation, this is the proper method devised by the masters for the new students to assimilate the teachings in the proper order so that progress is made in the most efficient manner. We have the beginning, which is studies of the aura. It's the first pillar, it's the natural starting point. Eventually you will want to own a copy of the book because you will read it more than once in the coming years. And for now we provide the PDF so that your initial lessons are basically free. We have also created the higherconsciousness.ca website and we put all of those uh, chapters directly accessible online. So you don't even have to buy the book. You can just read it online. Then we have the beginner's class broadcast where we're teaching the basic decrees and we have discourses on cosmic law by Mark Prophet with a new lecture every week. And then we have our tutorial videos on YouTube so you can connect with us online. That was the outline for the subject matter that I wanted to share that I created about a year and a half ago. Uh, just as starting point for what to discuss. So we'll look at the four pillars. This extract is quoted verbatim from page four of the booklet, Sacred Ritual for the Creation of the Cloud. And what it says is, if you are new to the teachings of the Son of Masters, or you are teaching students who are new, begin with beloved Kathumi's book on the human aura, and then Alchemy 1, and then proceed with Alchemy 2, and then go to Aura 2. These four pillars, these four books are pillars, foundations of the fourfold path of the Rose Cross that is later to be read in the Pearls of Wisdom from Sant Kamara. If you're going to teach these books, you must exercise daily with their formulas. It is most necessary to have this exercise so that when you present the teaching, you are the example, the living teaching itself. And so I came upon this instruction probably 30 years ago. And I took it upon myself to follow precisely the direction. And I read through the four pillars and I've done the exercises many times. <clears throat> and hopefully I am to some small degree, living the teaching and being the example of the teaching. These books are available in pocketbook size. If you get the human aura, you'll have the first and the fourth pillar, both in that book. And if you get St. Germain on alchemy, you will have the second and third pillar in that book. And having both of the books, thanks Deb, uh, Having both of those books gives you the four pillars. We have also put them on the Higher Consciousness website. Uh, I'll go there for just a second and share that with you. Um, resources. 
Is it this size? Click on the resources. And there it is, human or an alchemy. And share the screen. And there you see the four pillars. We're working on speeding up the website. We found one of the, the problems here, the pages don't load as quickly as we'd like them to. Uh, but there's book one, Studies of the Human Aura. Book two, Studies in Alchemy. Book three, Intermediate Studies in Alchemy. Book four, Intermediate Studies of the Aura. You can either click on the image or the menu across the top and get direct access to the text and click on each individual chapter to read them online or click on the audio and listen to Laura Hamilton reading them. So the four pillars are available there. The secret keys is probably one of the most profound pieces of information to have about not just the four pillars, but any dictation from the Ascended Masters that you will <coughs> read or listen to. And so we put that link at the top and we called it Secret Keys. Hopefully it would intrigue people and uh, by their curiosity, they would want to click on that right away. It's to your benefit that you begin to understand the Fohatic Keys and then the Pearl Call, which unlocks 90% of what is available in that teaching. And it's different for everybody. The Fohatic Keys unlock differently for each individual because they're specifically designed for each individual. And most of what's in those Fohatic Keys is not accessible until you give the Pearl Call. So that's the four pillars. Now, studies of the aura. Oh, that's just the PDF. That's the whole, you don't need that. Muddied Aura's picture book. This is the images that come in the intermediate studies of the aura. And so I have one of the older versions, so that it has nice glossy pages. And I removed the spine of the book so I could separate each individual page. And then I scanned them to get high resolution images. And I then put them into a PDF, which I can share with you. This is the images of the aura that were drawn on the blackboard, I believe by St. Germain. It might've been Kathumi. And there is uh, some text accompanying the images that explains what you're looking at. And this is just an average aura of an average person that you would encounter in life. And the explanation, explanation here is this is an example of the completely uncontrolled release of energy in the thought and feeling world. So you see up here, there's actually, if I pull that up, there's a snake there. See the snake there with his tongue stuck out? This is the energy in this person's mind at the time. Uncontrolled release of energy in the thought and feeling world. This energy is not being spent in the perversion of sex. It is rather being raised and allowed to go through the third eye and the crown imperfectly. So each of these images is worthy of your study. And the accompanying text explains the release of energy into the aura, what it looks like, why it's there, and how it affects you. Muddied aura number two, misqualification, filling the aura with brown. The sinking feeling you get in the belly when you contact human creation sinks all the energy down, down, down. Direct action of psychic conscious coming out as a psychic hook. A lot of people walk around in that condition. Muddy to aura three. Centering of the misuse of the sacred fire in the crown and the third eye. Look at all the activity up in the head chakras. No. Someone who is mentally polarized, yet whose mind is not filled with the Christ consciousness. They can be steeped in any kind of philosophy or carnal or intellectual accomplishment and yet not have the corona, the crown of Christ. So all very unpleasant colors there. Muddied aura four. Typical aura of the mass consciousness. The collective unconscious mankind who move as one, the sea of humanity who are not enlightened. 
Their auras will be filled with brown and green of the muck, just like the muck you see at the bottom of the river. They move in the astral plane. And Joseph, you were asking about the astral plane, and this is a classic example of the aura of somebody whose consciousness is mired in the muck of the astral plane. The lines of red and orange show that these people are a powder keg. They are ready to become angry at the moment that their eager egos are offended. Put them in contact with someone who is separated out from the mass consciousness and they're likely to explode because they cannot bear the contact with light. This might actually remind you of what happened at the picnic. Some of us were in contact with an individual who became very negative after receiving so much light from the cloud and the dictation. And they're not with us anymore. Classic example. Muddied aura number five. Another action of the mass consciousness. Person has considerable amount of faith. Notice the blue halo around the head. So there you see the blue. That's indication of faith. You notice the heart is a sympathetic heart, the energy of the heart, instead of coming out in a direct line, are tending to fall because this person has not discerned this discerned the difference between compassion and sympathy. So the energy of the heart and it's falling downward. This person is always in sympathy with someone who is the underdog and the sympathy goes to the solar plexus. Okay, so I do have my notes here. These were drawn by St. Germain. Now, these aura pictures, I think, should also be studied with the images that were given in the lecture, the science of rhythm for the mastery of the sacred energies of life which is St. Germain's lecture on music. We'll get to that a bit later. Muddied aura number six. Notice the coils coming out of the throat chakra. Mm -hmm. Greater misuse of the sacred fire through the power of the spoken word. It is mortal cursing. It is malice. It is being completely out of control in the throat chakra, sending forth arrows and barbs and psychic wedges. The red denotes passion, the black denotes the total misuse of the word of God. This person is in a state of anger. Lots of people walk around like that. Look at the red flash of the lightning bolt down in the lower area. Muddy door is seven. It gets worse. See the little demons, bat winged entities, demon with a pitchfork and a tail up in the upper part of the aura. The red arrows coming down out of the solar plexus and down the bottom. Let's blow that up a bit. Wow. You see a serpent and you see something that looks like a lizard. Yeah. Down at the feet. And they are inhabiting the aura. Those are demonic entities that are wedged into there, embedded in the aura. This figure shows the aura of a black magician using misusing the energies of the third eye and the solar plexus. You can see the demon forms, the demons of the mind that this individual is projecting. Very interesting image. Very real stuff. Muddied aura eight. This drawing shows the total mechanization concept, an individual totally dominated by the mass mind this is not unusual to see in the ores of people. You see that the Kundalini is nothing but an orange coil rising from the base of the spine. So there it is, orange coil coming out of the spine, not the kind of color you want. All energy is misused in all of the chakras, putting out a net of materialism and mechanization. The throat chakra misused, all the chakras overdeveloped with the perversions of the seven rays. It's not pretty. There is the perfected aura. Egg shaped and all white. And you see the proper colors of the chakras because they are emitting 
the light frequency that they are designed to project and radiate to the world. This is the chila standing in the old void. Shows the action of the sacred fire invoked as a replica of the cosmic egg, sealing the pure energies flowing through the purified chakras. And the instruction here, visualize your aura. There's that word visualize again. And I'll give you a little secret. Most people have never imagined this. One of the functions of the third eye is to project what is held as an image in the mind. Most people think about the third eye as an organ of perception that you clairvoyantly see into other dimensions with it. That is probably the least of its functions. The third eye, when properly utilized, will act as an organ of projection and it will project out into the world the blessings that are designed by the images that you hold in your mind. And so the master talk about meditating on thought forms and we teach very advanced thought forms that eventually the masters and farther down the Elohim Cyclopeia will project through you as a benefit to all of life. So here we're beginning the exercise by visualizing your aura as an ovoid of white light just what we talked about last week, visualizing white light, extending beneath your feet, beneath the coil, above your head, above the coil. See the aura increasing in the intensity of the light as that energy is expanded from the heart chakra and thence from all the chakras as the sacred mist that is called the fire breath of God. Interesting terminology. The sacred mist sounds very much like the creation of the cloud the fire breath of God. Let its purity, wholeness, and love fill the old void of your aura and fill your mind and heart, disciplining that energy and holding it in the creative tension of your cosmic awareness. And most of you will recognize the fire breath of God, the actual decree that we work with. You might want to spend some time working more with the fire breath. I can tell you a very interesting story just popped into my mind. Uh, I was doing the fire breath as a meditation back in 1987. And I was not ready for what happened. I had no idea that such a thing was possible. I was about five minutes into giving the fire breath when suddenly my consciousness rose out of my body. It went up the crystal cord and it went right to my I am presence. And for about five seconds, I had spherical vision. I could see in front, behind, above, below, right, left. I could see <laughs> all directions at once from that point in consciousness. And I was astounded. And what I saw was my I am presence, the way we see the chart of the presence. I saw my causal body surrounding me. I saw everything that we show in the chart of the presence. And it lasted about five seconds. And then my consciousness was back in my body. And I was there sitting in my room doing the fire breath. But it was a very extraordinary experience. This wow. caduceus action is the action that will take place when we have the stream of light flowing from the heart of the iron presence, and it will come straight down to the heart chakra, and it will flow in a figure eight pattern through the chakra while there is a directional flow coming straight down through all the chakras and back up. And we can intensify that process through visualization. And that image is provided to us so that we have an understanding of the flow that we want to create and the visualization that we want to hold when we're doing that. Caduceus action through the purified chakras, the four petals of the mother are for the anchoring in matter form of the action of the squaring of the fires of the heart, whereby the circle of infinity becomes the cube of God's self-awareness in time and space. And there's the fiery coil. Understand then that by your application to the law that I've released in the first seven of these studies. Now, what Kathumi is referring to here is the first second. This is actually in the fourth pillar. This is in the intermediate studies. It's Dwal Kul, 
who is instructing us here about the first seven chapters in the book, Intermediate Study of the Aura. Understand then by your application to the law that I've released in the first seven of these studies, there is being builded within your aura a fiery coil of light. Now this is crucial to your understanding. By reading those seven chapters, which means you've gone through the first three pillars. You're now in the fourth pillar. By reading those seven chapters and doing the exercises that are described in those chapters, this coil, this 33 coiled fiery coil of light is being builded in your aura. That is what's happening, not so much from sitting and visualizing the coil of light, but from actually doing the exercises and reading the words of the first seven chapters. Now, what happens when you read the words? You go back to the teaching I presented on the secret keys, the Vohadic keys that are embedded within the chapter, specifically designed for each person who will read the chapter. The Vohadic keys are unlocking the treasures, the seeds of light, that were put there for you individually. And by giving the pearl call, after reading the chapter, you're going to unlock the full 100% potential of the Fohadic keys that are there for you. And by doing that properly, there is being builded within your aura a fiery coil of life. This coil, which is approximately 10 inches in diameter, you ought now to visualize rising from the base of an imaginary sundial upon which you stand. As you look down at your feet, the coil proceeds from what would be the 12 o'clock line, positioned in front of your feet. The coil is an electrode that winds in a clockwise direction, the coils being spaced three inches apart. From beneath your feet to the top of your head, this coil is a pulsating white fire, and it can be focused as the action of the sacred fire of the Holy Spirit only in the aura of those who have the devotion to the Christ and the commitment to the I am that I am. This is powerful, important instruction that is so easily overlooked by people who glance at color plates and don't really study the notes that accompany them. The next visualization here is called individualization. And what it is showing is how we are all connected to source at the level of the I am that I am. These are the concentric rings of light that emanate from the chakras and from the secondary heart chamber. We have described the rings of light, which in the Christ ones are continually emanating from the heart chakra. Let us also consider that there is intended to be a continual release of concentric rings of light, not only from the heart, but from all the chakras. This release becomes possible as the individual consciously employs the chakras as distributing centers for the energies of the I am presence that circulate from the heart throughout the four old bodies. And meditation in the pyramid shows again, 33 coils. And this is 13 steps of initiation. The Chila meditating in the pyramid is meditating on the 13 steps in the Christ consciousness, the 12 initiations of the disciples on the 12 points of the common clock and the initiations of the Christ consciousness in the center of the clock. These are illustrated by 13 spirals or levels of attainment, which are achieved through the seven chakras. The 33 coils of victory. So you see the top pyramid has 13 coils. The bottom one has 33. 33 coils of victory are the 33 cycles in the lower pyramid, denoting initiations on the path of ascension successfully demonstrated by Jesus Christ. Every soul that would be free must accept the challenge to be the fullness of the law of life and the balance of the threefold flame and manifestation in each of the four old bodies. And so you see when the 12 godly attributes have been magnetized in the heart chakra, they can, they can be squared through the vision of the all seeing eye of God in the third eye chakra. So when you take 12 squared, you get 144. 
The threefold flame of the twelve virtues are balanced in the four noble bodies. There is converging of energy spirals in the third eye as the capstone is placed on the pyramid of life and the coming of the Christ consciousness. This picture called Transfiguration shows the threefold flame completely enveloping the individual. This is how it was in ancient Lemuria. Before our threefold flame was reduced, we walked within a six foot tall threefold flame. And because of the misuse of that power, the Lord's karma reduced it to a sixteenth of an inch and placed it in the secret chamber of the heart. That is the PDF book that I created that I'll share with, I'll send it out to everybody who's on the broadcast. And that's the color plates taken from Intermediate Studies of the Aura. And I'm going to also share with you the auric renderings taken from the Science of Rhythm for the Mastery of the Sacred Energies of Life, which was a two cassette album that was published back in the 1980s. These are images that St. Germain drew on a blackboard October 7, 1977 at the Soul Liberation Conference in Pasadena. When the music Come Together by the Beatles was played, this is what it looked like in terms of the sound and energy impact on the listener. This is taken from jazz music that was played by Benny Goodman and Gene Krupa. Now, if I blow this up a bit, you get to see all the little demonic entities in the aura. There's this, these ones look almost like monkeys, but got, they got faces. This was got a, a, more like a monkey face, this one more like a cat face. You see some howling demon there you see some bat wing creature the aura is infested with these demonic entities as soon as you play jazz music jazz you will discover when you study this TV, it's a two cassette album jazz has its origins in voodoo <gasps> And I recently found a video on YouTube where some people who are not students of the Center Masters give this entire explanation because they've researched it and they've done uh, a tremendous amount of investigation that show the actual links, how jazz originated in voodoo, just like the masters tell us. This one is music called I Got Some Help I Don't Need, performed by B.B. King. And I'm pretty sure that that's also jazz music. And when we blow this up a little bit, you see the crocodile, you see all the little demonic stuff in the aura. And people are walking around like that and they have no idea. And you turn on this music and it just attracts all this stuff into your world. This is music called Silver Apples of the Moon performed by Morton Sabotnik. I don't know if it's jazz or what it is, uh, but it looks like little flying insects there, maybe hornets, maybe worse. Who knows what, hap what lives on the astral plane. They've, they've got entities on the astral plane that, that we don't even know about, uh, not healthy. This is the song Respect by Aretha Franklin. And again, look at the bottom where the, you see the saxophone and here at the keyboard, there is some devilish looking demon. This is just all demonic stuff that you invite into your world when you play this music. This is taken from the Jitterbug Waltz. Doesn't look too healthy. This one, the song Midnight Rambler performed by the Rolling Stones. Looks like a fallen angel to me. 
I don't know what you see there, but I see dark wings. Yep. This one is actually taken from an actual voodoo ceremony. And you can see what's going on there. This is not of the light. Now the last one, this is the Blue Danube Waltz by Johann Strauss. And what you see is properly balanced, geometrically perfect energy spirals. And they are rotating clockwise and they are moving upwards. And this is what happens to your aura when you play this music. And so the great divine director brought into embodiment classical musicians back in the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, specifically with the purpose of providing for us the proper music so that we would know what proper music is, proper rhythm, proper tone, because the divine director also knew that in the 1900s, the sentence was coming due for tens of thousands of fallen ones who had been imprisoned since Atlantis. They were imprisoned on the astral plane and not permitted to come into embodiment. And their sentence was coming to expiration. They're going to be permitted by the Lords of Karma to come into embodiment. And the divine director knew what they would do. They would produce the same kind of satanic rhythm, same kind of music that they produced on Atlantis that was the cause of the sinking of Atlantis. And so before the children of light would get trapped in that music, the divine director wanted us to have the understanding of what correct music, correct rhythm, correct tone should be. And that's why the classical musicians were brought into embodiment to produce that music for us as the model. And we see the effect on the aura of this one example, the Blue Danube Waltz by Johann Strauss. That's the kind of impact we want on our aura when we're playing music, not the other stuff. So the science of rhythm, the original two cassette album contained a little black and white printed booklet that had these images. They're not available anymore. So I digitized them and I've stored them so that anybody can have them later on for further study. And I think that they're absolutely essential to the study of the aura in conjunction with what we just showed in the muddied auras um, color plates. Now back to the screen sharing. Oh, I can't do that. I can't click PowerPoint through here. So the light that we're talking about has many components. Just like light passing through a prism produces a rainbow, light coming through the chakras has various tones and frequencies. And so what happens is the light is coming down from the I am presence it's coming into the secret chamber of the heart and it's radiating out from the heart into the seven chakras. And each chakra has a different function, has a different ability. Each chakra will then radiate a particular portion of that light so that you need all of the chakras combined to contain all of the frequencies of the white light. And what's interesting is that an entire world religion has come forth as an expression of a particular light frequency. So we start with the first ray and we know Judaism facilitates your God development on the first ray of God's power through the throat chakra. So here's the blue throat chakra and the expression of that has been the formulation of the religion called Judaism. Buddhism facilitates your soul development 
on the second ray of God's wisdom through the crown chakra. So here's the light expressing through the crown. And it has become the foundation of the creation of the, the religion of Buddhism. Christianity facilitates your soul development on the third ray of God's love through the heart chakra. Christianity came from the heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. Hinduism facilitates your soul development on the fourth ray of God's purity through the base of the fine chakra. And if you study anything about Kundalini and yoga, which is the science that Hinduism comes from, it's all based on the Divine Mother and the fourth ray emanation through the base of the spine chakra. Confucianism facilitates your soul development on the fifth ray of science, healing, and truth through the third eye chakra. Islam facilitates your soul development on the sixth ray of ministration and service through the solar plexus chakra. Taoism facilitates your soul development on the seventh ray of God's freedom through the seat of the soul chakra, which is right here. And Zoroastrianism facilitates your soul development on the eighth ray through the secret chamber of the heart. And you don't see that one. It's behind the heart chakra, it's the secret chamber. And that's the eighth ray as the foundation for the religion called Zoroastrianism, which is the religion of the sacred fire. Uh, so this one was just... Let me see that. Somehow I didn't get that at the top of the screen. Showing the concept of white light containing many components. And then we showed that through the chakras. And then this last one was the misunderstandings about the colors of the chakras. And so we see what is published all over the internet and in books everywhere. Uh, it's the color spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, moving from the base to the crown. And I don't know where that color scheme came from, but I've seen it for about 30 years now. I know in my original study of yoga back in the 1970s, I saw a Sanskrit book that showed the base chakra as red. I didn't see the other colors like this. And I think the red was used more uh, symbolically than anything because red denotes the red planet Mars and Mars is actually the ruler of that chakra. So it may have been that there was, as they say uh, in the old teachings that the teaching had to be veiled by numerous levels of veils that had to be penetrated through very intense study because the wisdom was not for the profane and they didn't want it to be readily apparent what the truth was. Uh, but this whole color scheme, I've, I've seen this now just since the New Age movement the last 30 years, and everybody's taken the rainbow, and they said your crown chakra is violet and hogwash. It's not even close to the truth. This color scheme is what the masters teach, the base chakra, divine mother, purity, fourth ray, is blazing white light when it's a purified chakra. We saw from the muddied aura pictures, but that's not the case of most people. But when you have cleanse your chakras and purify them, and they will radiate the rays that focus through them. These are the colors that you will see. Yellow at the top. That's the color of the halo that surrounds a saint's head. It's the crown chakra. The second ray of, ray of wisdom is expressing through there. So naturally, it's going to be yellow. Third eye is green. Blue is the first ray of God power focusing through the throat. Pink in the heart chakra, solar plexus, purple and gold, and the bottom flame in the seat of the souls. That basically takes us through the content I wanted to share today in Lux Fiat Continued. And we still have uh, at least 15 minutes for questions. This is absolutely amazing. I, I love uh, learning about this. I don't, I don't understand how the original colors of the chakras were incorrect. Well, I don't know who created that color scheme, but it's copied everywhere. 
Yeah. And if you look at it, it's the colors of the rainbow, which is rather arbitrary. Why would the chakras behave the same way that <laughs> glass behaves? When you have a prism and you focus light through there and you get a rainbow, when you have rain in the sky and the light is focusing through water, uh, those are two different things. But why would the chakra behave like, like water or like glass? Yeah. It's was it very just arbitrary. A, yes. I was just wondering if it was just a simplistic um, decision to have those colors long time ago by other people. Well, there may have been something in the idea they talk about veiling the teaching so it's not readily apparent. But I don't know where the color scheme came from. And today, everybody does copy and paste. And just because mm -hmm. one guy says it so, everybody believes it. And every book you look at today is going to show those colors. Mm -hmm. According to the masters, that's completely wrong. OK. Well, when it's great to know. That... When you come Sorry. to know the, the action of the ray, the activity of the ray, as it's expressing through the chakra, it makes perfect sense that that would be the color, the way the master described it. Okay. Yeah, it's great to know the true colors. Yeah, and they're beautiful. Yes. So, Michael, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, the book, The Unveiled Mysteries. Yes. From Saint Germain. Um. Is, is this, okay, I have the Humanora book, which is Duwakul and uh, Kachumi, yep. and I use that. Um, then the excerpt from the Unveiled Mysteries, you sent it to me, and it was St. Germain's three-step meditation, and it is about how our thoughts can become things if we clothe them with our feelings, and it, it, it's a wonderful uh, meditation every morning and every night and you only you sent it to me about two days mm, three days ago yes and i started doing it it's incredible <laughs> it's incredible it, it's it's i your heart just your heart flame it's just, anyway does that have to do something with the teaching that is in the human auras because are uh, this unveiled mysteries i've not is that book available in the um summit lighthouse on the in their bookstore no it's not published by summit lighthouse it's, it's published by saint germain foundation so how do i get it well you could buy a hard copy from saint germain foundation on their website or i could send you a pdf copy saint germain foundation yes um but it, this is the first time I've heard of that. Okay, so back in 1930, Guy Ballard was hiking at the base of Mount Shasta. And he was just out for a walk. And during his walk, he was contemplating rumors that he had heard about a race of advanced humans that lived in a city called Telos underneath Mount Shasta. And he understood that they were uh, not just highly evolved, but they were from Atlantean and pre-Atlantean times and that there were beings known as ascended masters who were there. And he was wondering, wouldn't it be nice if you could meet them? And that <laughs> afternoon, St. <laughs> Germain appeared to him. Wow. <laughs> basically stood there, shook his hand, hi, I'm St. Germain, and we got things to do. And took, oh, him cool. on, took him on an adventure that is told in part in the book Unveiled Mysteries. So part of the adventure of where St. Germain took him, some of which was on other dimensions, some of which was traveling in their light bodies. Uh, not all of the story is told, but, but much of it is told in Unveiled Mysteries. And throughout the telling of the story, instruction is given so anybody who reads the story will also read the teaching and the instruction. The adventure continues in book two, which is called The Magic Presence, which is even more amazing because they go to the Cave of Light in India and they actually go for a ride on a magic flying carpet in the physical plane. 
Wow. The third book, which is called The I Am Discourses, is a series of 33 lectures given by St. Germain on the science of the I am. And those three books are all highly recommended for students of the masters. And so we get them from this foundation? The St. Germain Foundation was created by Guy Ballard um, as he was instructed to by St. Germain. And for quite a number of years, Guy Ballard and later on his wife, Edna, who was also trained as a messenger, delivered dictations by more than 100 ascended masters, angels, and cosmic beings. And in the beginning, in the early years, St. Germain would stand in Guy Ballard's living room and speak. And as he spoke, the words that he spoke would suddenly appear in the air in characters of living fire. So you could read them as well as hear them. And this reminds us of the discourse we heard last Saturday night with the lady mm -hmm. in her who was clairvoyant and she could see the words of the dictation, three or four words before they were spoken. She saw them in characters of, of gold. Remember that? Yes. Okay. This is how the original dictations came out in the 1930s with St. Germain standing in Guy Ballard's living room. And as he spoke, the words would hover in the air as characters of living fire. Now, not everybody could see them. Some people didn't have their third eye open sufficiently because they had not been properly purified to be that, that clairvoyant. Some people could see it very, very clearly. Other masters who spoke in the room, same phenomenon. Some people could see him, some couldn't. But all of these dictations were recorded on audio. I have some of the originals. They're on little green vinyl. Um, I think it's eight, or sorry, it's 75 RPM. I don't have equipment to play them, but I've got the original recordings of these dictations. And then uh, there came a point where the Lord of Karma said, we cannot use this method because too much light is being wasted. And so when you get to book four in the I Am Discourses, it is explained that the dictations were received on the light and sound ray. And what happened was you no longer saw the master standing in the room and you no longer saw the characters in the air in living fire, but you heard not with the inner hearing, but audible, the record on the physical device. You heard the words being spoken as you saw a beam of light projected into the room, and it was called the light and the sound ray. And that technique was used for a number of years, and then eventually messengership, the way we know it, was developed, whereby the physical vehicle of the messenger was utilized by the master, and they would speak through them. And as Mark Prophet was talking last Saturday night, some of the dictations were so powerful, they were described as ex cathedra dictations, like the one we have from Mother Durga. It's one of the very few we have that's described as an ex cathedra dictation, where the master is completely taking over the vehicle of the messenger and speaking through them, operating their vocal cords and, and doing all the work. So this St. Germain Foundation, where, where, where is that? Like, where, how do I order that, the Unveiled Mysteries? I can send you the website link. They're headquartered in Chicago. They're in Chicago. Yes, I'd like the website link. They it have is, a group. Pardon me? You too? Sorry, is it it's like stgermainfoundation.com or something like that? I think it's .org. Actually, okay. I'll pull it up right now. We'll have a look at it. Okay, um, great. Thank you. I'm going to stgermainpress.com. I'll do a screen share. So there you can see the website, St. Germain Press. Yes. And there you see in the featured products, Unveiled Mysteries for $17. Wow. That was a lot of years ago. No. <laughs> This is today's price, but that's American dollars. Okay. Uh, and then you're going to pay shipping. Uh, usually when they get to Canada, if you could find a, a bookstore like uh, the Rising Sun that would have this, they'd probably 
charge around 40 bucks. Actually, I've never seen the price this low. Uh, it's very interesting. And volume one, Unveiled Mysteries. Uh, volume two is The Magic Presence and volume three is the I Am Discourses. Those three books, everybody needs to read. There's a tremendous library here. Uh, and you can't read everything. Yeah. We have to really be discriminating about how we spend our time. Yeah. Mother recommended we all read the first three. So I continue to make that recommendation. And they're just such phenomenal books. Uh, when you look at the content published by Summit, we've got over 10,000 hours of dictations and pearls of wisdom to study. Mm -hmm. And so what I've done in my 40 plus years, I've been through the material extensively that's offered through Sage Brain Foundation. I've been through the material offered through the Bridge to Freedom, uh, the Agni Yoga Society, uh, Theosophical Organization. And in my library, I have most of that content, either in hard copy or in PDF. Mm -hmm. And I use all that material to formulate the lessons that I create. And then I try to steer the students down a path that's going to get the most value out of the time spent. So that, for example, what we've created in higherconsciousness.ca website, the understanding of the four pillars, uh, the pearl call, the intro videos that I produced, students that work with these presentations will take literally 20 years off their learning curve. They'll save mm -hmm. you so much time and get you so much faster to where you need to get to. Because if you just go by curiosity or by what your heart is pulling you, this feels good, it resonates, I want to learn this, you could spend a hundred years going through all the content that's available. And you don't have the time. You just don't. I, I certainly don't have the time. Yeah, so thank God I had the time. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I did it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Michael. And it's taken more than 40 years to do it. Oh. I find that the <clears throat> what shows I do have my guru and I know who my guru is and I find what shows up is right for me and you sending me this because you were sending me the information on the Lord Surya but suddenly this got in with it and I, I think it I don't know if you even meant to send it to me but it suddenly came in. So that's why I'm asking about it today. But I don't want to, there's lots of, there's other people here. What, and what now I know mention? the one that you sent me from the Unveiled Mysteries was in the midst of the Surya information you were sending me. So that, that was kind of interesting. <laughs> you, you had mentioned a few days ago a dictation by Maha Chohan that I sent. By? Maha Chohan. Yes. Yes. And yet I never sent you anything by Maha Chohan. And I was quite <laughs> surprised that you made that comment. And what was more interesting was two days later, Carol Moxham in a phone conversation said, thank you for sending that prayer to Maha Chohan. And I said, Carol, I never sent that. I said, what are you talking about? And apparently <laughs> an email that I sent two years ago suddenly got sent to me. So I'm seeing what we get we can trust that what we need comes to us the in a way. Find a way. Yes. And I've noticed, I have sent emails that don't show up till a year later. And, and this phenomenon is a weird internet anomaly, but I think oftentimes the masters are behind it, that they find a way to get to you what you need. And that's what I'm trusting now. I'm not trying to write, read every or whatever. I'm just trusting my experience in the day um with the work that i'm doing and okay that's great thank you michael You're so welcome. you mentioned something about rising sun instead of going through the states is rising sun a canadian uh, it's rising sun is a bookstore in richmond hill that's where we had the temple for 12 years and she okay has, so. she has a few titles from the saint Germain foundation in her inventory but i don't believe she has unveiled mysteries Okay, so I have to go through this press place. That's probably your best. 
they also sell it as a gorgeous PDF. So you could buy the PDF online and just download it. And it's it's a very well made, it's better than the PDF that I would send you, which is something that was just created 10 years ago by other students. The actual official version that you purchased, and I think it's only about a second here. Uh, about Saint Green series, volume one, Unveiled Mysteries. The Kindle is three dollars. The EPUB is three dollars. The audiobook is thirty-five. The PDF three dollars. Okay. So wow. you go to their website for three dollars. Download a gorgeous color PDF. And you have it. Of the Saint Germain's Press. Yes. Okay, I'll do that. Thank so you. I'll, I'll do that. I'll share the screen again, just so you can yep. see what I'm doing. Okay. So we're at SaintGermainPress.com. Mm-hmm. And you, here in the menu, you see home, book, St. Germain series. So if we click on books and we click on St. Germain series. Right. And then we see Unveiled Mysteries. So we click on that. And now you see the options, the PDF download. So you click on PDF download and add it to your shopping cart. Probably want to create an account so you can get it easier next time. And for Lovely. three dollars, you've got the book. Fabulous, Michael. You are God's angel. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you so, thank you so much, Michael. I absolutely loved what you had to say, and it was so educational and informative. But I'm so sorry. I have to go. So I'm actually waving goodbye. <laughs> Bye, Karen. Thanks for joining us. Bye, oh, Karen. Bye, honey. Bye. Oh, um, and... Uh, um, bye, Joseph. It was nice seeing you too. See you tonight. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't we'll know see. if I can make it. I'm still in Beaverton, but um, uh, I'll be thinking of you guys. So, uh, see you again. Bye bye for now. See you next time. Bye. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Deb. Bye. Joseph, any questions? Uh, no, I have no particular questions. I, I have had the pleasure of reviewing uh, a decent portion of what we talked about today. Um, I, I have general philosophical questions, probably better suited for me to meditate on directly. Um, I, it's so confusing to me that like, you can meet so many wonderfully kind and blessed people and uh, they'd be listening to this kind of music, but they'd still be, you know, regular kind people. Uh, I suppose we could uh, suspect like a two-faced circumstance. Um, but yeah, it's just amazing to me that uh, so many genres of music are uh, not blessed. And so, yeah, that's confusing to me. <laughs> but like I said, I should probably meditate on my own and continue to look into that. There is a... Uh... Tremendous science to sound mm -hmm. and how sound is applied through rhythmic techniques. And there are two albums that I highly recommend. One is Imperil, A Commanding Danger, which talks about a nerve poison that is generated within the nervous system um, through irritability. And irritability in the aura is most profoundly noticed through the impact of sound rhythm. So that album in combination with the album called The Science of Rhythm for the Mastery of the Sacred Energy of Life is essential material for students at some point. I've made all that material available. Anytime that you want to access it, just let me know. Uh, and it's very disappointing to a lot of people when they discover that music that they were feeling very good about suddenly they discover it's not only is it not endorsed by the masters, but it's very harmful and destructive. And it's just, it's actually a type of addiction that needs to be let go of. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's just another one of those baby steps that we're not, we're not going to give up all of the things that we're accustomed to in one day. We're going to have to just gradually shed the things that don't fit with the vibrational frequency that we're moving into. 
I think, Joseph, something that might make you uh, happy is um, Beloved Kahumi says, listen, this is just their aura in this moment from listening to this music. Or this is their aura. Don't think it's their aura totally. Like your aura can change from hour to hour, day to day. Um, so... Right. Don't don't think just because someone listens to this music that it's they're letting a way in. They're opening a door for the entities to get in. And 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 the more you do that, the more the more you know you're opening the door. But the point is, for the one the time they listen, um, yeah. But but that doesn't make them that. Is that we we have he's very clear about that in the book about saying. Even if you can see auras, do not go around trying to say this person is this because that's what they're doing. So, you know, I think the good thing is to just send everyone light and let everyone take their own journey, like hold the immaculate concept, and then you never have a problem. Yes, I, I feel like I'm well protected in that manner. And yeah. I everyone. So I appreciate what you said there because I didn't think about that component as well. Yeah, it's just it's that point, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we carry the same aura every day. Is that right, Michael? Absolutely. And I, I would add to that with the comment that we find Yogananda giving to his students at the ashram. And a gentleman said to him, if I want to study yoga, do I have to give up alcohol? And Yogananda says, no, you don't. But if you practice yoga diligently, you will lose the desire for alcohol. And he mm -hmm. says, do I have to give up smoking cigarettes? And Yogananda says, no, you don't. But through the diligent practice of yoga, you will lose the desire for cigarettes. Yeah. So in that context, you don't have to give up rock music or whatever type of music you're accustomed to. But I think you will discover that through working with the light, you will come to lose the desire for that type of improper rhythm. Right. Mm -hmm. Baby steps. And I remember hearing mothers speak about the equation of light. And so we're doing all of these um, spiritual practices to bring light into our chakras and they're spinning. But when we listen to those types of music that have certain rhythms or certain levels of vibration, it actually causes the chakras to trip and hesitate in their, in their spinning and the light actually spills out. So the reason that certain types of music still feel good, even though they're causing a net loss of light, is that we're, feel, we're feeling that light again as it spills out of us. So we feel the light as, as we absorb it. We also feel the light spilling out. So it's easy to mistake that for a good experience when it's actually a net loss. Well said. Very interesting as well. I think Thank we're good you for today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Lots to think about. Lots to think about. We do another class next week. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. See you tonight. Okay. Have a blessed Always afternoon. Always good.